I'm Hayley, one of the team here at Cirque. I thought today you could join me in making a balloon powered car. Okay, to make your balloon powered car, the good news is you can use all kinds of recycled materials. Today we're going to use a paper cup, four milk bottle tops for the wheels, paper straws, some doweling or kebab stick would be fine, a skewer, balloon pump, blue tack, scissors, tape and a ruler. That's all you're going to need. Now, first of all, we're going to start thinking about the wheels to attach to our car. Now, we're going to use the kebab stick or dowel as the axle and we're going to use some pieces of straw as the axle tube. That's going to sit inside there with a wheel attached to allow the wheel to rotate freely within that. We'll then attach the straw to the car itself. So, we do a bit of measuring, get our straws ready. First of all, let's cut the axle tubes. They're going to be two pieces of straw, the same width, and they're going to be slightly wider than the cup itself to hold the axles in place. You can measure those out, depends upon the size of the cup or container that you're using. So I'm going to cut those to size there. Carefully. You could ask someone to help you with that if you're not sure. So there's our two axle tubes. I'm going to use some of this double fine sticky tape to attach the tubes to the car. You could use other tape or anything else you think would be strong enough to hold those in place. It's going to take the backing off this tape. There we go. Just saves a bit of time. This tape's great. I'm going to position those carefully so they're on the car nice and straight. Put those in position. That's the first part completed. Next I'm going to prepare the wheels for the axle. I can make a little hole in the plastic um, tops here to put the axle through. And the easiest and safest way of doing that is to use a blob of blue tack or plasticine, a sharp skewer, and take your bottle top, place it on the blue tack, fingers well away, and then just use the skewer to pierce a hole. And again, ask for help for that from a growing up if you need to. Through it goes. I'm going to put the holes in all four of my wheels. When we've done that, we're going to start attaching them to the tubes on the car. I want to make sure that my dowel is long enough to fit through that to allow the wheels to be attached to the dowel the fingers are well out of the way, so push that through carefully. So I want to make sure the wheels can rotate freely in there. So I'm going to measure that up and cut that to the appropriate length. So I've got two pieces of doweling or kebab stick cut to the right length here. I'm going to attach a wheel to that one. You could again use the blue tack if you wanted to, just to push that through. It's a nice tight fit. You could use some blue tack to attach the axle to the wheel if you wanted to. That's up to you. That's on there nice and firmly. That's going to go through the axle tube. And then I want to do the same thing on the other side. Just very carefully push that through. If the straw comes off, don't worry about that. Push that through. You can reattach the straw later. Put a blue tack on there. And the important thing is that those set of wheels are on straight and they're rotating within the axle tube there. That's important. Attach those back onto the car again and the same thing for the other two. Now, how are we going to get the car to move from here to the end of the table? I'm going to give it a push. Worth finding that. Let's use our balloon to provide some force to force our car along the table. So you may have seen a recent video we made about how to make a balloon zip wire or balloon rocket. 
It's the same principle here. We're exemplifying Newton's third law. When I inflate the balloon and attach the straw, as the air is forced out this way, the car is forced in the other direction. As Newton said, for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Let's see that at work. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, just cut my straw so it's slightly longer than the, than the um, in this case, is a cup. You could measure that with your ruler or just do it by eye. Just carefully cut the straw there so it's slightly longer. I'm going to put the straw inside the neck of the balloon. Use an elastic band to attach the balloon to the straw. Take your time with this. You want to make sure that the air can still leave the balloon and be forced through the straw. You want to make sure that the balloon isn't crimped or tangled. There we go, you can see that the balloon is inside, the straw is inside the balloon there. Perfect. I can use a balloon pump to inflate my balloon. and bend it over. I'm going to just, you could use a peg to keep that if you wanted to. Just bend that over there so it's not going to deflate the balloon while I'm working. A peg would be a perfect thing for that. Now, I've got some time now to make sure that my car's wheels are running smoothly. I'm going to attach it using some of this tape. Put that onto the top of the car. to lift the car off the ground rather than try and push hard as you're attaching something because the wheels need to be running freely. Now I'm going to first of all have to think about how the car is going to move so I'm thinking about the air being forced that way and the car going that way. That might affect the position you put the cup into to get them a streamlined shape. Let's try this now. Off we go. And my car got about halfway along the tables. You can investigate a couple of things here. Different balloon sizes, different numbers of pumps of air. How far will your car go? Can you race against a different car? Could you try to get your car to the very end? Think about streamlining, think about the amount of air you put in the balloon, and experiment away to your heart's content.